Hello and welcome to a Bundesliga special of the FM show. I'm Tom and today I'm joined by German football expert Rafa Honigstein. Good to have you here, Rafa. Thanks for having me. So Rafa's going to help us take a look at some of the clubs and players in the Bundesliga that have really stood out uh, over the course of this season and also might be worth you guys taking a look at in FM19 as well. We're going to be looking at uh, clubs with interesting philosophies, some nice tactical elements in there as well, some advice on where you can maybe improve on them in FM19, as well as players you may wish to sign or look to develop for your own team. So we're going to start by looking at Bayer Leverkusen. Let's jump straight into it. So as I said, we're going to kick off with Bayer Leverkusen. Now Leverkusen have a bit of reputation for being a breeding ground of young talent. Their squad's packed full of, of wonder kids and, and young stars. Do you think they have the potential to be genuine title contenders? Well, Julian Nagelsmann certainly thought so. He called them his title contenders. It hasn't really been borne out by the results, but mm -hmm. I think the potential is clear for everyone to see. There is so much pace, so much technical ability, also depth up front, that it's hard not to see them doing a lot better and uh, conversely being so exciting to take charge of them because they should really be fighting for the top um, you know third of the Bundesliga maybe even higher and uh, I, I just love the combination of, of pace that they got with Leon Bailey and Julian Brandt and uh, that kind of creative uh, fulcrum that Kai Havertz has become. Then you've got Kevin Folland who's kind of a more wily type of striker. Mm -hmm. uh, Alario, a real poacher. So there is there is a lot going for them and Leverkusen once again I think are doing justice to their as you said reputation as the go-to club to see talent emerge first um, and that's why a lot of scouts are always looking at them which is of course uh, a bit of a problem when it comes to holding the team together. Yeah you mentioned uh, Kai Havertz there he's someone who I mean he's only 19 years old but he's holding down a first team place at Leverkusen and he's sort of become a bit of a creative playmaker for them as well. Yeah I mean Havertz can play in a variety of positions he can play wide mm -hmm. he can play as a second striker he can play in a number 10 role and he's even played uh, a little bit deeper at times and he excels in all different positions he's got so much calmness on the ball he always makes the right decisions he's got an elegance to him people can't really tackle him he's kind of pressing resistant as we say in german which has become very important in the modern game yeah and the guy plays like he's 29 not 19 at the same time deceptively quick i just looked at the stats the other day he's one of the quickest players in the bundesliga you wouldn't think it because he's so tall and and um, and always seems to have time on the ball. Yeah. Um, and he's already seen as somebody who's going to be hugely important, not just for the club, but also for his country in no time at all. Excellent. Well, there you go. A few tips if you fancy managing Leverkusen on FM19. So the next club we're going to take a look at is Werder Bremen. Now, Bremen, I think, have a really unique identity, a really attacking way of playing. I mean, what can what can you tell us about them? Well, Werder Bremen are one of the blue chip teams uh, of the Bundesliga, and as you said. Um, Going back to the 80s under Otto Rehagel and later Thomas Schaaf, the early noughties and mid noughties, they have always had this strong DNA of attacking football, sometimes almost sort of uh, kamikaze type football, <laughs> uh, with very few uh, defenders. Excellent. So, I mean, if you're trying to replicate that attacking style in, in Football Manager, do you think that the squad can, can play that way? Do you think that the squad's built that way, or do you maybe have to look to bring in a couple of extra players to help out? It depends just how um, cavalier your style <laughs> you want it to be. Um, at the moment, I think what is what is very different about Werder Bremen is that when they attack, they attack with five, sometimes six players, which makes it overwhelming for a lot of the opponents. But at the same time, of course, if you cannot then find the right finish, um, you're a little bit vulnerable at the back. And that's why we've seen a bit of a seesaw yeah. uh, as far as their results are concerned. But overall... You know, with the likes of Max Kruse and the Eggestein brothers, they have so much um, quality on the ball and going forward that it'd be almost shame not to play that way. So I guess it sort of comes with the territory that if you yeah. take Werder Bremen, you know that this is what the fans demand, demand this is what the squad kind of needs. You want that kind of style and knowing that you might not eke out 1-0 wins, but you will have a lot more fun along the way. Excellent. So there we go. If you want to play attacking football with a, a bright young squad, then Bremen is the club for you. So we're going to move on now to talk about Hertha Berlin. Now, Hertha are a club that 
a very dear to my heart. I had a very entertaining uh, save with them on FM17, won the league. So um, well done. Congratulations. thank you very much. Thank you. One of the players that's caught the eye this season is, is Lazaro, who is, I mean, he's playing a right back, basically, but still chipping in with goals and assists. He's, he's, he's an exciting player to watch. And I think um, if you, when you're talking about you know, building on top of that foundation, he's the sort of player that, that certainly adds to, adds to the mix. And it's something they haven't had before, really, in that, in that you know, role. You know, you're absolutely right. I think so far, they've, um, up until the season, they were known for the solidity and the, the real quality came in front of goal. But now it's more evenly spread. And Lazaro mm-hmm. is a perfect example. He is really an um, attacking midfielder by trade, but has been playing as a wing back, has been playing as a right back. And it makes such a big difference if you have a right back that can attack yeah. and can join and can do things and has at the same time the muscularity and the physical presence to defend really well i think there is a good reason to believe that he might be the next sort of superstar in that position um, wow. david alaba comparisons are inevitable because he's also austrian and austria don't, don't produce that many uh, amazing players but i think they are warranted because he has the same um, makings of a guy who might be a very good um, midfielder mm-hmm. but could be an absolute world beater in the fullback positions which yeah. always seem to be um, very difficult to fill adequately uh, but we could also mention uh, Javaru de Rossoon who's come course, in yeah. um, he's another one who suddenly have given her a pace and they can wear, vary uh, their game and uh, it's even easier for them of course now to counter attack because they've got so much pace on the flanks. Yeah, and do you think so obviously we talk about counter attack there. Do you think they have have the ability over some of the, you know, maybe less talented squads in the league? Do you think they have ability to dominate games that they couldn't do before? I think that would be the next step in their development. Um, I think they are at the moment they're still set up to contain and then be quite vertical, quite direct. I mean that in a way is is their secret. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they still need to maybe add one or two ball playing central midfielders right now it's even if the formation isn't always that way it's still in my mind it's a 4-4-2 right. with four midfielders and two strikers and sometimes the um, different parts of the team are not always um, as uh, joint up as some of the better sides are sure. with the fluidity yeah. but it doesn't really matter because they can still maximize those opportunities that they create they don't need a lot of chances that's still part of their uh, their dna and the padadai and in the rawson they have now somebody who is so exciting to watch yeah. and uh, likes to cut in and likes to really relieve some of the pressure of the attackers uh, and skips him uh, puts in um, a performance in part as far as the goals are concerned and uh, if you were talking about exciting players I think him and Lazaro have both been have to be mentioned in the same breath because they are sort of the new face of this very exciting yeah, how to how to side. Well, there we go. If you want to try out one of the new counter-attacking styles in FM19, then maybe Hertha are the club for you. Now we're going to move on to a club that have well, quite frankly, been dominating the league this season and also performing quite well in Europe, um, and that is of course Borussia Dortmund. And Dortmund, obviously, one of the biggest clubs in in, in Germany. Um, but this season, they're they're absolutely flying. They come up the blocks um, and and won, you know, virtually every single game. Um, and it's all down to a real mix of, of youth and experience. You're right. I think there is a wonderful blend between not just youth and experience, but also muscularity and physical presence and an ability to have um, that kind of mentality that you sometimes need to do the, the less glamorous stuff in mm-hmm. Axel Witzel and Thomas Delaney. They've brought in sort of a new holding midfield um, all by themselves. And then on top, you've got this unbelievable amount of, of quality, um, both in terms of the numbers, but also in terms of the quality of the players. There's so much there. I mean, if Mario Götze can't get into the squad sometimes, <laughs> you just know that this is a good team. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, let's talk about uh, a player who I think has been making headlines, certainly on on this side of, uh, of, of Europe as well, uh, Jaden Sancho. Now, someone who, um, I mean, a familiar name, I think, to many, not just FM fans, but English football fans, who has taken that sort of now is a more established route to, to joining the Bundesliga as a young player and, and being given that first team first team football and he's taken you know he's taken full advantage of it. Yeah, I think um, Sancho has been the outstanding performer for Dortmund, which in a crowded field says says quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, Paco Alcácer might have a word to say about this, <laughs> but uh, I think that Sancho has been 
has been unbelievable. And this has come on the back of um, half a season last year, where in Dortmund they were saying, yeah, he's great, but he still makes so many wrong decisions. And his inexperience is telling, you know, he tries too hard a little bit. And suddenly he's gone from sort of a hot and cold player and it, that inconsistency to being 100% on and focused and sharp and producing every single game which at his age is a real miracle. And I think it's not just testament to him and his um, maturity, but also to Lucien Favre and the team around them, which have all given him a platform to, to shine and yeah. to suddenly go from um, one of the budding talents to a guy that can start for one of the best teams in, in Europe. And uh, Dortmund are one of the best teams in Europe and certainly the most fun team in Europe, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, attacking style, goals for fun, and, and it's... Bearing, bearing true in the league and in Europe. So there we go. Dortmund, obviously, or as I said, one of the most popular saves already, but definitely worth checking out on FM19 as well. The final team we're going to look at is Borussia Mönchengladbach, who are a team that have not only a rich heritage in, in German football, but also one of the most well-supported teams in, in the country as well. I mean, what can you tell us about the current, current squad? Well, Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany are synonymous with youth. Mm -hmm. They're the folds, um, which kind of feeds into that idea and they're synonymous with free-flowing attacking football. Right. Really since the late 70s, they've been trying to play that way and uh, they're trying to come back to the glory days, which has brought them a big fan base all over Germany. I think it's hard to, to under, understand just how well supported they are. Um, a lot of people sort of have them as their separate, as their second club. Right. Or if you, know, if you grew up in a place that didn't have a big team, you would have adopted uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach in the 70s or 80s. So still massive following. And they're all getting very excited because this is a team with Torgen Hazard, with Jonas Hoffmann, with Alessandro Play up front, mm -hmm. that played some really good stuff under Dieter Hacking. He's not always been able to sustain the kind of momentum that they built up a few years ago when they got back into European competition. But I think there's a sense that this year they're once again being true to their kind of tradition and their traditional values as one of the most exciting teams in Germany. So for, for Gladbach to take the next step, where do you think they need to, to strengthen and where, where do you think people who are going to take charge of an LFM could, should be looking to prioritise bringing players in? I still think that the uh, fullbacks can do with a bit of an upgrade. It's a difficult, really difficult area yeah, um, sure. to find good players. A lot of teams looking for fullbacks all the time and for the likes of Borussia Mönchengladbach who don't necessarily have the biggest budget. It's, uh, it's a problem area, I would say. And you wonder if they could play a bit more football. Um, you know, when they lost uh, Mo Dahu to Borussia Dortmund, I think his sort of, um, I wouldn't say gap, but his um, uh, ability to be the classic number eight who does a little bit of everything hasn't quite been filled yet. In Zakaria, they have a really exciting guy coming through, yeah. uh, young Swiss international, but he hasn't quite um, established himself just yet. Well, there we go. Room for improvement as well, but obviously a very, very talented squad at your disposal if you want to take charge of Gladbach on FM19. Well, that'll about do it for this Bundesliga special of the FM show. I'd like to thank Rafa for joining us and giving us his insights into both the teams and players we discussed. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. And if you have enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like on the video. And of course, comment down below with the sort of teams you're going to be playing as in the Bundesliga, the players you're going to sign from there and tell us your stories down below. And don't forget to subscribe as well to the Football Manager YouTube channel to find out all the latest goings on at the FM show and much, much more besides. But that'll about do it for this episode. We'll see you again very, very soon. Bye, guys.